We continue now at the top of Daf Chafalif Amid Beis in Maseches Nazir. This is Nazir Daf 21b. And the previous summer we brought the Mishnah which said, if an individual says Hareini Nazir, and another person hears him and says, my mouth is like your mouth, my hair is like your hair. So in that situation, the second person is considered to be a Nazir. He's associating his Nazirus with the first individual. And the Gemara says, Uraminu, we have the following question from a Tosefta. The Tosefta says, Yodi Nazira, Viragli Nazira, Lo Amar Klum. If a person says, my hand is a Nazir, my, my foot is a Nazir, that's nothing. The person is not a nazir. Roshi nazira, kavedi nazira. If a person says my head is is a nazira or my liver is a nazira, so in that case, I a nazir. Then the person is considered a nazir. And the Brisa says, the Tosefta says, Zaklal, the rule is as follows. As long as the person says that something which the person's life depends on, meaning they pick a, they pick a part of the body, my head is an azira, my liver is an azira, those are parts of the body which the life of the person is dependent upon, so then the person is considered a nazir. In other words, in those situations, it's as if you're saying your entire guf, your entire essence is a nazir. And so you see from this that if a person picks a part of the body that the neshama is not tolibo, so the person is not a nazir. So how is it that when the person says, my mouth is like your mouth, my hair is like your hair. So isn't that just a declaration on the on a part of the body where the nisham is not taluyabo? And the Gemara answers, Amar of Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says, no, the Mishnah means to say as follows. To Amar Hachi, what the person is saying is like this. Yasa pi kefiv miyayin. My mouth should be like his mouth in terms of the restrictions from wine. Visari kesaro milogos, and my hair should be like his hair in terms of the restrictions about regarding cutting the hair. And so that's why in those situations, those declarations are considered to be nazirus. In other words, the Gemara initially thought that the person was literally saying, my mouth should be a nazir, just like the case of my hand should be a nazir, my foot should be a nazir. That's why the Gemara said that should not be considered a good declaration. And the Gemara says, no, that's not what it means. The declaration in our, in our Mishnah is with regards to the restrictions of Nazirus. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Hareini Nazira. If a person says, I am a Nazir, Vishama Baal of Amr Vaani, and her husband hears and he says, and I also am a Nazir, so Eno Yachalahafir. In that case, he can't annul her vow. And the reasoning was, if he annuls her vow, he's really annulling his vow also, because his vow is associated with her vow, and a person is not able to annul his own vow. And the Gemara says, Iboy Luhu, they had the following question. Baal miyakar akar odil megas gai is when the husband annuls the vow of his wife, is he uprooting that vow from the beginning as if there was no vow in the first place, or is he simply severing the vow, he's cutting off the vow from this point in time forward? And the Gemara says, Lamai nafkamina, what difference would it make? It would make the following difference. Laisha Shanodra Benazir, let's say you have a woman and she takes a vow to be a Nazir, Vishama Khaverta Vyamra Vani, her friend hears her and says Vani, Vishama Bala shall reshona Vehefrala. And then the husband of the first wa- of the first woman, he hears about the vow and he undoes the vow, he annuls the vow. So Iamrit Miyakir Akar. So if you're gonna say that what he's doing is uprooting the vow as if there was no vow, so Hahinami Ishtaroi. So in that situation, so the second woman also also, would also be permitted. The Avant Megas guys, but if you're going to say that all he's really doing is severing the vow from this point in time forward, so then E Ishtaroi, so then this first woman, her vow will be permitted, Chaverto Asira, but her friend, her vow is going to be Asir. And so the Gemara says, My, so what is the halach again? Is the vow completely uprooted or is it just cut off from this point in time forward? And the Gemara says, Tashma, come and hear proof from our Mishnah. Hareini Nazir, Vashama Bala, Vamar Vani. Let's say a person says, I'm a Nazir, and her husband hears and says, I also am a Nazir. Eino Yachalafer, he's not able to annul her vow. And presumably the idea is because if he annuls her vow, it's like there was no vow, and then he ends up annulling his vow, and a person cannot annul his own vow. Visal Gadaitach Bal Megas Gaiz. Now, if you think that all the husband is doing is severing the vow from this point in time forward, Lefer Lish, Tovu Litzer, let him just annul the vow of his wife, and his. And his and his vow will remain. He'll still be prohibited. It shouldn't be a problem. Don't you see from our Mishnah that the husband is completely uprooting the vow? And the Gemara says, Lo, no, Leola Megas guys. It could be that all the husband is doing is severing the vow. Uvedinhu delay for law. And really, he should be allowed to annul her vow. It really wouldn't affect his. Vahainu time of the Lomotsi Mefer. And the reason why he can't annul her vow is Kevon do Amar lo Vaani. Because since he said to her Vaani, he said, I also am a Nazir. Keman do Amar Kayim Lechi Dami. That's as if he's saying, I'm upholding your vow. And in a situation where you uphold the vow, you can't just annul it. Imishal Hakamaso Motsi Mefer. If he would ask a Chacham and undo his his upholding of the vow, then he could indeed annul the vow. Vilo, but if he doesn't do that, if he's if he's upheld the vow and he doesn't undo the hakama, so lo matzi mefer. That's why he's not able to annul the vow. And the Gemara continues, Tashma, come in here, the following proof. 
And this proof is from a Mishnah later on. The Mishnah says, nazir. If a woman takes a vow to be a Nazir, and she separates her animal for the Karbonus. Then her husband comes along and he annuls her vow. So so if the animal was his, so so then the animal can go out, it can graze with the rest of the flock. But if it's her animal, so then the animal which was separated as a carbon chatos, it has to die. And so the Gemara asks, if you're going to say that the husband uproots the nether as if it was never a nether in the first place, so so then the animal should just go lechulin. It shouldn't have to die. It should just be considered like it was never a carbon. Don't you see from this Mishnah that the husband simply severs the vow? And the Gemara says, Really, I can say to you, that the husband, he uproots the vow from the beginning. And this is the reason why the animal has to die. Cave in the Lord's Kapara, since she doesn't require a kapara, Havikechatos Shemesu Balet has the status of a carbon chatos whose owner died, Ukamiri the Chatos Shemesu Balet, Thomas. And, it, and we, we learned that if you have a carbon chatos whose owner died, so then the animal has to die. We will learn this with the commentary of Tosvis. Ha'isha Shenadra bin Nazar Vefrisha Behemta says Tosvis, Chatos Ola Ushlamim. When it comes to the Chatos and the Ola Shlamim, that's what she's separating over here. So, Imsha Lo Haisa, so it means as follows. If the animals belong to him, Ha'behema Perish Mi Behemos Shal Bala, meaning again, it was just separated from the animals of her husband. So then we said, Taitse Vetira Be'eder. Then the Mishnah said that the animals can go out and they can graze with the flock. What does that mean? Kilomar Chulani. That means that the animals are Chulan. In those cases, we can Consider as if the animal is not a carbon at all. Kevon Shefer Labal, and the reason why is because the husband annulled the vow. What's the explanation of that? Just because the husband annulled the vow, therefore, if the animals belong to the husband, they're not considered carbonus. And that's the reason is, that's explained later on. Because anytime a husband gives to his wife something that she needs, meaning he's only giving it to her if it's needed, if he didn't annul the vow for her, so she needs it for the carbonus. But let's say it's a situation where she doesn't need it. He annulled the vow. She doesn't need carbonus. The carbonus nazir. So lo maknila. So he never gave it to her in the first place. That's why in a situation where it comes from his animals, so he's only giving her the animals as a carbon if she needs it. So if she if he annuls the vow, certainly they are not going to be considered hectish. They're going to be considered chul. And that part of the Mishnah is no problem at all. Now the other part of the Mishnah said, let's say it's a situation where it's her animal. So in that case, we say that. That the carbon chatos does have to die. And so the Gemara says, Now, if the husband is totally uprooting it, so so the carbon chatos, when it's her animal, really it should be chulin. What's the reasoning for that? The idea is that the nether has been uprooted from its, from its root. It's like there never was a nether. That would be the same thing as a case. Let's say a person separates an animal from. Naziris, and then asks a chacham and undoes it, there the tanan, the nafka lechulin. We have a Mishnah later on that says the animal goes lechulin, and that's why the Gemara is saying if an annulment, if a hafara is miyaker kaakar, if it uproots it totally, so then the animal should not be considered hektish anymore, it should be considered chulin. And then the Gemara answered, even if you say the nether is totally uprooted, still the carbon chatos does have to die. The reason is because she requires a kapara. Because she really sinned here anyway because she distressed herself. She prevented herself from having wine. The Gemara over here means to answer that we're following the opinion of Rebbe Lozer HaKafar. Because Rebbe Lozer HaKafar says, in general, when a person becomes a nazir, that's a sin. Therefore, the chatos is considered like a chatos whose owner died. Even though there was a hafar over here, but still, there's the law of a chatos applies to the animal. If the animal is hers, the gumro makdash because she did indeed, uh, she did indeed sanctify it as a carbon chatos. And the Gemara continues, Tashma, coming here, another proof from a Mishnah later on. 
let's say a woman takes a vow to be a Nazar and she's drinking wine and she's becoming Tamei Meis, so she gets 40 lashes. And the Gemara says, Hey, Chidami, what's the case of this Mishnah? If the case is that the husband did not annul her vow, so do we even need to say this? Of course, she made this vow, and she's violating it. Of course she gets Malkus. Rather, it is obvious the Mishnah is talking about where there was a Hafara, where the husband did annul the vow. Now, if you're going to say that when the husband uh, when the husband annuls the vow, he's completely uprooting the vow, why is she getting 40 lashes? Guys, rather, don't you see from this Mishnah that the husband is just severing the vow from this point in time forward, and that's why she gets the Malchus for what she's done. And the Gemara answers, no, I could say to you that according to this Mishnah, the husband is totally uprooting the vow. But because the end of the Mishnah says that when the husband annuls the vow, and she doesn't know that he did that, and she's drinking wine, and she's becoming Tommy Mace, it says that in that case she doesn't get 40 lashes. So because of the Seifa, that's why we bring the Reisha, even though the case of the Reisha is actually obvious. Rashi over here says, Really, the mission is talking about a situation where there was no hafara, there was no annulment. Now, the question of the Gemara had been, but if the husband didn't annul the vow, so of course, you don't even need to say that she gets mal because she's violating the Naziris. So, but you're right, really, the, that part of the Mishnah is not necessary. But since at the end of the Mishnah, we talk about a case of Afar where she doesn't get Malkus. That's already a Chiddush. There, where she didn't know that the vow was annulled, maybe you would have thought that she should get Malkus because she thought she was doing something prohibited. So, since the safe of the Mishnah is needed, so we have the Reisha of the Mishnah as well. But in Achinami, the Reisha is obvious. It's a situation where there was no Afar. So, of course, she's going to get Malchus. We'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Chaf Bey's Ahmed Aleph.